Hey friends, welcome to my channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Toria. It's my pleasure to have you. I would be so honored if you would hit that subscribe button and stick around. Valentine's Day is this week, my friends, and this year I am a newlywed, so it will be mine and Mike's very first Valentine's Day as a married couple, and we're cheesy like that. We like to celebrate all of the firsts and holidays and things like that. So. I thought that it would be a really fun idea to show you guys kind of what I do the entire process from start to finish to turn myself from this into this in order to go out on a fancy date or for a special occasion or things like that. So I'm going to teach you guys all of my tips and tricks when it comes to tanning, nails, hair, makeup, skincare and everything in between. So this is a whole eight hour transformation. I did this all in one day. This has been so much fun. The only thing that I'm dreading now is that I have to do almost all of this stuff all over again in time for Valentine's Day for our actual date because we are going out to like a fancy-ish dinner. So I just wanted to show you guys like what I picked out to wear, all that good stuff. So if you guys want to see how I did all of this, then just keep watching. So the first thing that I do whenever I have like a big event coming up or like a big date night or I just want to like give myself a little pick me up is always to apply a self tanner. And the self tanner that I'm using today is actually my absolute favorite self tanner in the world. I wish that it wasn't so incredibly expensive, but it really is the best out there. I've tried so many. Um, unfortunately, I'm not sponsored, so I never have been sponsored by Loving Tan, but they are my favorite brand. I feel like they get you the darkest, they last the longest, they smell the best, and um, I just, I can't live without it. So um, this has been part of my like weekly routine for the past almost three years now. So I like to use the Loving Tan Deluxe Bronzing Mousse, and I use the ultra dark for formula. If not, I'll usually get the two hour express in dark, but I really like the color of this one a lot better, even though it does come in a smaller bottle. Basically, if you guys don't already know about this, I'm sure plenty of you already do. It's a mousse formula, so it comes out as a foam. You spread it all over your body. It has a nice dark color guide so that you can see exactly where you're applying it. So you can see if it's streaky at all, so it's pretty foolproof. Um, I absolutely love it. it. Like I said, it doesn't make me smell gross throughout the day as it processes. Wow, I still have like morning voice. It's like so like husky. <laughs> Is this sexual? Also, I think it's worth it to mention that the night before, or even like at least an hour before I apply tanner, I take a shower and I use the scrubbing mitt, the tan removing mitt that you get from Loving Tan. Um, I absolutely love this. I feel like it does such a good job at exfoliating the skin. And I just get in and scrub my entire body all over, scrape away any dead skin cells so that it, you're putting the tanner on fresh skin and so that it can really seep into the skin and last as long as possible and of course not leave any patches or cling to dry areas of your skin. Um, I like to apply the tanner though with a different mitt. I don't like those really cheap mitts that you can get for like the Saint Tropez or even the Loving Tan. I always like end up putting my fingers through them and they have massive holes in them. Only after a few uses. I don't know if I'm just like the Hulk, like I'm hulking out or something, but I'm sure I'm not the only one who has this problem. So when I discovered this tanning mitt, wow, my I just short circuited there for a second. When I discovered this tanning mitt, this one is from Mind Tan, I was like blown away. I feel like I'll never have to buy another one ever again. I mean, I probably should for sanitary purposes, but you know what I mean. Um, this one is just like this soft velvety, but it's like really thick material. And there's no way that I could ever put my fingers through the edge of this. Like, I feel like this one just feels a lot nicer because it's so soft, disperses the product. I don't feel like it soaks up any more product than the other ones do. So it's not like it's just like wasting your product or anything. I don't feel like it does that any differently. So on the rare occasion, so on the rare occasion that I actually tan my face, which doesn't happen very often, I will use a fluffy brush like this and just buff it onto my skin. Um, I also use this to buff it onto my hands and my feet and things like that and if I need to like do any extra blending, which usually I don't. But today I'm not going to be tanning my face because I have a few other things I want to do. If I had an extra day to do my tanner before I had to get ready, then yeah, I would do that. But because we're doing this all in one day, I'm just going to skip tanning my face and um, just let my foundation do the magic there. Okay. 
let's get down to business. So I do like to start out by applying just a small amount of lotion to any dry areas, areas that the tanner seems to kind of stick to. So elbows and my hands, they tend to get really dark really fast. So usually I'll even wash off the tanner from my hands about an hour after applying it. Also to my knees and my feet. And then we're good to go. I just feel this instant gratification when it comes to applying tanner. It's almost like putting like a filter on your skin. And it just, uh, I don't know, it just feels so nice. It makes me so happy. Just make sure to see how the color guard can see exactly where I'm putting everything. And to be completely honest, I am 90% sure that I don't even own a foundation that matches me when I'm not wearing tanner, like at some stage of my tanner. If I'm not wearing any tanner at all and I'm the whitest I possibly can get, I don't even think I own a foundation that would match me, you know? <laughs> so this really isn't an option right now, is what I'm trying to say. Now normally I do only tan the top half of my body or areas of my body that would be visible, but I feel like my husband deserves a fully bronzed wife for our first Valentine's Day together. So typically I'll do this in the morning. Right now it's nine o'clock. I'm gonna let it process for about four to six hours. We're gonna do other things on the face during that time. And we're also gonna take care of this situation here. Look at these little nubby fingers. Oh. Another thing I like to do and haven't done in quite some time, I do this about once every three to four weeks, is tint my eyebrows. I just like them to have a more fuller appearance. I like how they kind of frame my face, just add a little bit more dimension, especially when I'm not wearing makeup. They also create a sharper line around the edges of my brows so that when I go to fill them in, I know exactly where the product is supposed to go and I don't have to use as much. This is another one of those things that if you have more time, unlike me, these are the things that you would get done before your actual getting ready for your date or whatever it is that you have going on. But of course I have to do everything in one day, so this is just how we're going to do it. Um, but I would do like take care of getting your brows done and doing your tanner and doing your nails and things like that like a day or two ahead. I do actually do these slightly different than I used to, so if you guys want to see a whole new updated version of how to wax and tint your brows at home, just let me know, I'll make that for you. And now I wanna do one more thing while these are processing, just to like save some time. This is another thing I haven't done in quite some time just so that I could show you. I do this about once a month. Uh, yeah, I think about once a month is right. I haven't done this in almost two months now, so I'm kind of a little like grizzly bear. But if you want your foundation to just lay so smoothly on your skin, you want super smooth skin, you wanna get a really good um, exfoliation going, then I highly suggest um, dermaplaning, but doing it at home. So the, there's this procedure that you can have done by an esthetician in a spot called dermaplaning where they take a scalpel and they run it along your skin and it scrapes away like any dead skin cells and any vellus hair that you may have on your face and that allows your foundation to lay a lot smoother on your skin. It gives you kind of a glow and it just feels really, really nice. And it's a good way to get rid of those little hairs without having to wax them off. No, they're not gonna grow back any thicker or darker. That's all in your head if you think they do, but I promise you they don't. So that's one thing that I have been doing for a couple of years now, like religiously, I absolutely love doing it. And I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see any of the hairs on my face, but when I show you what I scrape off, you guys are going to be blown away. So usually I'll take an eyebrow razor, kind of like this one here. I like that this one's a lot wider because I can just cover more surface area at a, at a time. And basically what I do is just start on the side of my face and I'll pull the skin kind of tight and then just go in an upward motion along the side of my face. Do you see that? Oh my God. Ah, oh, that's so crazy. My skin feels so smooth right now. Like it feels like a baby's butt. 
Oh, I love this. I love it so much. I'm about to show you guys what, this is pretty gross, what all came off of my face right now. It's crazy. Really, can you guys see all of that hair and all of those skin cells? That's so crazy. That all just came off of my face right now. Ooh. So typically after I've done my exfoliating, my brows are done, all of that stuff is taken care of, I like to do a mask, preferably right before I start my makeup because that's how you get like the most hydration. It'll sit really nicely on your skin. You can do this the night before or the morning of. Um, I'm gonna do it right now. I'm using the Innisfree It's Real Squeeze Mask. I love like the sheet masks. I have so many of them, so I was going through them trying to figure out which one I wanted to use today. And I picked this one because it says um, it has moisture from freshly squeezed acai berries. It's full of nutrients to help the skin stay tight and firm. So anything that's tightening and firming is also going to make your skin look really, really nice under makeup. So I figured I would pop this one on t today. Um, you wear it for about 10 to 20 minutes. So while I have that on, I'm also going to take care of my whole nail situation. And the nails I have for today and the ones that I wear the majority of the time, they're the only stick-on nails that I really feel like last long enough. They're like good value for your money. You can paint them. You can do whatever with them. Um, these ones are my absolute favorite. I actually just wore my last pair for like three weeks and I had to peel them off because they started growing out and they were looking a little crazy. So I was like, all right, it's time to peel them off. I did not have to glue any of them back on the entire time. None of them fell off. I'm going to show you guys exactly how I do it to make them stay for that long. And there are just any of these Kiss brand um, acrylic nails. They have to be the acrylic kind. Now usually I do get the medium length um, these are the long length, so they're going to be really long claws, but they didn't have any left in stock, so I got two of the long, I believe these are about like $6 for a box of these. They come with glue, they come with a little nail file, stuff like that, if you've never seen them before. If I have the option, I'll usually get these ones. I like to make them into coffin nails by clipping, clipping off the ends. I'll show you how I do that, um, but I'll show you how these look as claws before I do that as well. And the reason why I like to do this at home, one, it's a lot cheaper than going to a nail salon too I am the most impatient person in the world when it comes to like going to appointments like I get my hair done maybe like once a year I never get my nails done because I hate sitting at the nail salon like I am NOT a girl in that sense of the word like I do not go and have treatments done things like that um, that's just me personally I'd rather just do it myself get it done and then move on to the next thing this is going to be on my face for 10 to 20 minutes, so that should be just enough time to do my nails, and then we can move on to the next thing. So what I found is that the best way to make these last as long as possible is to make sure, first of all, that you haven't used any kind of lotion or cuticle oil before applying these nails. So the first thing you're going to do is prep your nails. You're going to take the little nail file that's included and you're going to go over the top of all of your nails. This is going to rough up the texture and create a surface that this, the glue and the top nail that you're pressing against it has more to adhere to and it lasts a lot longer. Now after that I went through and figured out what size of each nail fit me best and laid them out. Here they are. And now we're just going to start gluing. So it does come with this glue here. Um, so I'm gonna take my first pinky nail like this and I'm gonna apply just like a dot of glue, like that much glue. And then what I'm gonna do is just take the end of it, I'm not squeezing any more glue into it and I'm just going to spread it around so that it's evenly coating the inside of this nail. And then what I do is just place it like this on the very edge of my nail and then slowly press it down and then push down as hard as I possibly can and hold it there and you'll be able to see where the glue is spreading out underneath your nails to make sure that you don't have any kind of um, air bubbles or anything like that. You really want to hold it down tightly enough so that you don't get any of that discoloration and it looks like an even coverage all over your nail and then this is what it will look like. So if you don't push it down hard enough, you'll have like little white bubbles underneath the surface. And this is going to make it last a lot longer because there aren't these little air bubbles popping it off your nail. 
is what they look like once I finished. Um, like I said, I like to have them more of a coffin shape and a little bit shorter. Because I do work on clients and I'm in their face a lot, I don't wanna poke anyone's eye out. So that's actually what I prefer to do, especially because these ones are the long ones and not the medium size. So what I like to do is go ahead and take a pair of my clippers. I know that some people would sit there and just like file them forever, but I'm too impatient for that. So usually what I'll do is just stick the nail in just a little bit, depending on how short I want them. Like if I wanted them this short, I could, but I don't. I just want to cut off the very tip. So I'll judge how far down I want to go. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'll just clip it. And I just do that with all those nails. And then I have the nice coffin style because Kiss does not actually make this style of nail. So I do that and then I'm I decided that because these ones are so clear and they look really messy to me, um, I am going to go ahead and um, paint them. I'm going to paint them red for Valentine's Day, of course. I'm going to use my Essie gel polishes and I'm using the color 360 Spiked with Style. Okay, finished my nails, took a shower, did my moisturizing, and now it's time for makeup. So I wanted to say that I tried to pick out a bunch of things more so on the drugstore side that are more affordable, things that you guys might already have in your collections. I'm going to keep this look um, pretty simple today. I mean, if to some people it might not be simple, but for me, I usually do like crazy smoky eyes, cut crease, glitter, all that kind of thing. I just can't seem to stay away from it, but today I'm going to control myself and we're going to do that. So I'm going to start out with a little bit of skincare, get some hydration going on, and then we'll get into the makeup. So the first thing I'm going to use is the Too Faced Lip Injection Extreme Instant and Long-Term Lip Pump Plumper. Um, I love how this feels. I love how it smells. I love that it's like holographic in the tube, uh, but I don't really feel like it plumps my lips at all. I put it on with the hopes that it does, but really I feel like it just kind of makes them red but it still feels nice and I paid for it so I'm gonna use it next thing you're gonna see a lot of pixie beauty products because one they are drugstore and two I have been using them non-stop lately and I just got them and I'm absolutely loving them so that's what we're gonna use today um, so I'm gonna start off with a hydrator and this is like my favorite skincare product possibly of all time because it's so freaking pretty um, it is the rose caviar essence encapsulated moisture serum so it has like these little I don't even know it's just like just like these little pink globs in it it's so hydrating and moisturizing it feels so good on the skin it feels like you're just literally like rubbing water on your skin but it's like actually hydrating and not just falling off your face and it looks so pretty it smells like roses any of the products from Pixi that I'm showing you um, that I'm going to use today, they all smell like rose because it's from their rose collection. So if you guys don't like the, that kind of scent, you won't like these products. In my struggle to find a drugstore primer, I found that I do not own one. So I'm going to use this product as a primer instead because I feel like it gives me that same kind of texture to my skin that really grips onto my foundation. So again, another Pixi product. Sorry if you guys aren't digging this, but um, the Pixi Rose Flash Balm. So I'm gonna apply some of that all over the face. This one's like a thicker consistency. It says it's an instant skin booster. Moisturizer, primer, and mask. Okay, maybe it is a primer then. And I just glide it over my skin. I don't do too much working it in. I just kind of lay it down in the layer and then let it sit. I'm just going to go ahead and quickly correct my under eyes because I'm tired of looking like a crackhead right now. Sorry if that offends any crackheads out there. For foundation today, I'm going to be using the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation. I have two shades here, and I'm hoping that I can just kind of mix the two to create my shade. I have 220 Natural Beige and 118 Light Beige. Okay, that actually looks really nice and smooth on my skin, but clearly we have 
definitely not enough coverage at all. So now that we have this whole thing situated, I'm going to conceal my under eyes. I have two concealers here that I'm going to mix together. This one is the L'Oreal Infallible Full Wear Concealer that you guys probably saw if you watched um, two videos ago, I think. I did a wear test of this one. Um, so I'm going to use this one in shade 360 Cashmere and then I'm going to pair that to slightly lighten it a little bit and add a little bit more brightening with the ColourPop No Filter Concealer in the shade Light 16. Is that the same color? I don't know, it's very slightly lighter. Maybe this wasn't necessary at all, but we're here already. And I'm going to set my under eyes quickly because they, they are already like creasing so much. It's crazy. Um, I'm not sure if I just applied like way too much product. But we're just going to set them so that they stop doing that shit. And I'm using the Well People Translucent Setting Powder. This is not drugstore pricing, but I did get it from Target, so I'm just going to call it a drugstore um, setting powder because I don't have another one. I absolutely love this powder, too. This is my favorite powder of all time. I made a whole video about it like a little over a year ago because it doesn't have talc in it. For cream contouring today, I'm afraid to use this. I haven't used this in so long and I remember this being like crazy hard to blend out, but I'm gonna do it for you guys. This is the LA Girl Pro Conceal, high definition concealer in the shade Toast. I'm just gonna do small amounts at a time and blend them out instantly because I'm really afraid to just let it sit. Okay, that wasn't so bad. I want something pretty subtle because I'm gonna go over it with bronzer anyway. I just want a little something there. Okay, maybe I'm just crazy because I feel like this looks pretty nice. Ooh, it does. Blend this in. I actually really love how this looks. It blends in so nicely. Now because this foundation is so matte, I really don't feel like I need to set it with any more powder except for under my eyes, so I'm just gonna leave it as it is and move on to the next thing. So I tried to pick a palette that the majority of you guys would have, one that would be really good for Valentine's Day and one that I personally love and use a lot, and that is the Jaclyn Hill Morphe palette. So that's what I'm gonna be using today. I honestly have not even decided what colors or what shades to use, but they're going to be in this like reddish, pinkish kind of vibe here. So like I was saying, I wanna do something pretty simple today. So I'm only gonna use like maybe three colors max um, and just create a look doing that because I really just kind of wanna focus on the lashes and the lips and not spending so much time doing my makeup. So with that said, So with that said, I'm going to start off, I'm going to be using, I'm going to be using this color, this color, and then possibly like this one or one of these two. So I'm going to dip into that lighter of the two berry shades and start to work that all over the lid and through the crease. And then with a smaller brush, I'm going to go in with that darker shade and work that onto the outer V. Okay, so I'm going to take this like highlight shade out of the palette and put that all over the inner part of my lid using my finger, just because using your finger with these just packs it on a lot easier than using a brush. 
And I'm also going to work those colors along my lower lash line as well while we're here. Might as well. And also highlight the inner corner of the eye with that same shade I used all over the lid. And that is pretty much it for the eyeshadow. Now I've always been more of a winged liner kind of gal and I just recently got this new liquid eyeliner that I'm absolutely obsessed with it. I honestly feel like it's one of the best I've ever used. The only con about it is that if it gets wet it does run so you don't want to be crying with this you don't want to wear this on your wedding date wedding day unfortunately because it is so perfect i wish that it was only waterproof but this one i did end up getting at the drugstore i got this from walmart and that is the the balm schwing eyeliner i'm so in love with it guys you guys will see why the applicator is amazing it's so matte black you don't have to go over it a million times it's so nice and fluid I can't even say enough good things about this So I'm using some drugstore lashes today for you guys. Today I'm using the Ardell Wispies. I love these ones more so than the Demi Wispies because they're longer in the center and shorter on the outer edges. I just feel like this complements my eye shape a bit more because my eyes are a little bit further apart on my face so when I wear the flared out um, lashes on the edges it kind of pulls them even further apart. I like that it kind of just emphasizes this way rather than that way. So I'm going to be applying those. I love the nice, thin, flexible band. I feel like they're really easy to use and you can make them look a little bit more dramatic by adding mascara to them. So really quick while those are drying, before I go ahead and put any mascara on, I want to bronze my skin. So I'm using another favorite. It's the Physicians Formula Butter Bronzer. This one smells like summer. And you guys know I'm going through those winter blues right now. So I just need all the summer that I can get. And then for blush today, I'm using the Milani Luminoso, which is another drugstore favorite of mine that I've had forever. I use it all the time and I absolutely love it. I just feel like it gives me that like glow from within look. I like to apply it using like a duo fiber brush. I don't know why. I think I saw someone do it once and I can't remember their reasoning, but maybe it just has a lighter touch. It's less dense. Um, so I love using this and I like to kind of bring it up to my temples and almost like blend it slightly in with my eyeshadow. I know that's really weird, but I feel like it gives it more of like a seamless look. So don't hate me for this guys, but I really don't think I have a drugstore highlighter that I really, really love. If there's one that you guys love, leave it down below so that I can try some out. But honestly, I feel like with highlighters, you get so much product in them that even like spending the $28 or however much they are, that you're pretty much never going to run out of it. I mean, I literally use my highlighters every single day and I haven't even gone halfway through any of the ones that I use. And there are like three that I use on a regular basis. So I justify it that way. I'm going to be using the my favorite, which is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Amrezy highlighter. This is one part that I like about doing my makeup before my brows is that I can do this and then also highlight my brow at the same time without like getting highlighter in my brow product. Normally I would be using the L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara. This one is my current favorite, 
but this formula is waterproof right now and I do plan on giving myself a lash lift tomorrow so I have to avoid waterproof mascara. So today I'm going to be using the Pure Cosmetics Fully Charged Magnetic Magnetic Mascara. See how much bigger they look with just some mascara on them? It's crazy. They can look really, really dramatic. Okay, time for some brows. I have my little block of soap here. Just going to spritz it and get a little bit of soap on my spoolie, brush it through so that my brow product will stick and my brow hairs will kind of stay in place. I do still set them with gel. Um, I find that it holds it a lot better. I don't know how some people just use the soap and get their hairs to stay. Maybe mine are just really stubborn, but I have to do a little extra step. And my brow product of choice. If you guys aren't new here, I'm sure you can guess. It's what I use every single time I do a video. It's a Profusion Define Brows Set. I like to use a little bit of medium brown and a little bit of blonde. Look how disgusting this thing is. Sorry. But see, the brow tint really did help so much. That took me, like, no time at all to fill these babies in. It usually takes me so insanely long when I do it from scratch, so. Of course, we're going to set them with the Anastasia Clear Brow Gel. I don't know how I haven't managed to run out of this yet. This is like the first and only tube I've ever bought. Um, I don't know if I should have admitted that here on YouTube, but I just haven't run out of it yet, so I don't know if this stuff actually goes bad. Mm, yeah, it says six months, but whatever, it's on my eyebrows. I'm willing to run that risk. For lips, I really couldn't decide what I wanted to use. I don't really have any um, drugstore lip products on me currently. I don't know why or where they all went because I used to have a ton of NYX and I can't find anything. But I already had a lip color in mind for today's look anyway. It's one that I've been using a lot lately. I just got and I absolutely love it. I feel like the color will work really well with everything else going on. So I'm just going to go ahead and use it. I was going to debate between this one right here and then the one that I'm gonna use, which is this one, because um, this is just a little too orangey, I think. Um, this one is called Autumn by Kylie Cosmetics. Love this color so much. This is probably my favorite shade from the Kylie range ever. It's pretty much my favorite, but I am gonna use a drugstore lip pencil. So I'm gonna be using the NYX Suede Matte Lip Liner in the shade London. So it's a nice, like, neutral, like, slightly warmish brown shade that's kind of dark so that's going to give me a little bit of definition and contouring around the lips and then I'm going to go over it with the Fenty what is this called? Stunna Lip Paint and then, and then I'm going to go over it with this Fenty Stunna Lip Paint in the shade Uncuffed I just feel like this color is really beautiful on so many different skin tones and it's just kind of straying away a little bit from the typical red lip pink lip um, or even nude lip on Valentine's Day. So I thought I'd just like spice it up a little bit and like throw a little curveball you away. And then setting everything in place with my favorite setting spray. This is the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. I'm sure you guys have seen it, love it, know it. 15 bucks at Ulta. The best. This has been my go-to hair look lately. I feel like it's really cute, really modern, really fun. And I kind of just get like serious Ariana Grande vibes from it. I don't know, you guys can tell me, but I just like feel so fun and cute when I do my hair like this. So I'm going to show you guys. It's actually really, really easy to do. I'm using this Remington uh, 3 quarters inch curling iron. 
I like to use it as a wand. I just wrap my hair around it. My last curling iron just broke and it was one inch. And I felt like it wasn't quite tight enough to hold the curl all the way, especially in the middle. It would kind of fall a little, especially underneath. So I tried a little smaller one and I feel like it works really well. So that's what I use. And I actually use it on like almost the lowest setting possible. This one you can change the heat settings. And I also realized that my hair did not need to be curled at such a high temperature. So hopefully in the long run, my hair will be a lot healthier. So what I like to do when I start off, I'm just gonna be curling my entire head basically, but to start off and to kind of protect my hair from any sort of heat damage, I like to use the Agave Healing Oil Treatment. And I use this when I get out of the shower as well. I put it on my dry hair to blow dry. And I use two pumps and spread it out into my hands and then just apply it to the ends of my hair. And then brush it through. So I'm gonna start off by separating my hair, leaving the bottom layer out and then just tying up the top. I'm just going to wrap away from my face and keep the end out as much as possible because I like to keep those straight. And then drop, holding it in my hand for a second and then I just let it fall like that and I just push it to the back. I'm going to be adding extensions, so I'll tell you at what point I normally add them. I'm going to go to about almost halfway up my hair, and then after I curl this section, I'll pop one of my extensions in. So now I'm going to add an extension. I don't add a ton of extensions to my hair because my hair is pretty thin, like I said, pretty fine. And if I add too many, you'll definitely be able to see them showing through. I'm really not good at um, teasing my hair, so that's not really an option. This is already curled, so now I can just kind of pop it in. But this is one of my pieces from the My Fantasy Hair Extensions that I've had forever. And it's just one of the four, four weft pieces, I guess is what you'd call it and I just like to pop that on to the back of my head just to add a little bit more thickness, particularly to the ends of my hair. Okay, and then now that I've gotten to this section here, I am going to put this up into a, like a little ponytail, but I want a little bit more thickness in the ends. So I'm gonna put in two more pieces of extension. So I have two, two weft pieces here, and I'm just going to comb those out, and I will show you guys how I apply these so that they don't show. So what I'm gonna do here is pull this hair forward, and I'm going to split it pretty close to the back, like this. And I'm just gonna pull it around to the side so that I can keep it separate, so that it doesn't go into the rest of my hair. And I'm just going to clip these back like this. Where's the edge? So I'm grabbing all of this, I'm actually going to pull down a little bit of these pieces in the front because I like these smaller pieces to kind of frame my face, so I pull those down. If you don't have them, don't worry about it, I just find this easier than trying to like lay edges or anything like that. So I like to just pull these down and I feel like it still covers up like the little sparse areas I have here. tight like this. This way I can avoid having to curl all the way up to the top. I just separate it first and then curl it afterward. 
So now I'm going to take each of these little pieces, just like little sections of this ponytail, and curl those. Don't do arm day before you do this. And then last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and curl these. And I'm just going to curl them ever so slightly because I don't want them to be too curly, especially because they're so short they can get that way really quick. So I just like to wrap them quickly and then release and pull them so they stay a little bit more relaxed. So that's the hair all finished. I loved how it turned out. It looks great. Usually I have a really hard time with this ponytail, but one and done. Okay, so let's go ahead and get dressed. to say thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching this video let me know if you liked videos like this because I would totally make another one for you if you guys really enjoyed it and for other occasions or you know events that you guys may have going on in your lives if you did enjoy this video please let me know by giving this video a thumbs up it would be so helpful for my channel it helps me grow and helps other people see my video as well and I'm always forever grateful for you guys in supporting me I'd also love to know what kind of video you guys would see, like to see next. Feel free to leave me a comment or just say hi. Um, I would love to be your friend. I hope that you all have a wonderful Valentine's Day, whether you love it or hate it, whether you have somebody or whether you're just loving yourself this year. Um, I hope that you guys stay positive and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.